Hey, we're back. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I see some people rolling in, so it looks like mo- some people are finding their way back in. Sorry about that. No idea what happened. Had to reboot everything, so everything seems to be working fine, though. Who knows, though? The next time, we'll we'll have audio issues. It's usually how this pl- plays out. <laughs> um, but what's up, everybody? We'll give it a little bit just to let some people roll in. Uh, what's up, Sean? What's up, Harry? Good to see you, Mark. Yeah, I think we're good now. I think we're good. All right. Looks like everybody's starting to roll back in. So, uh, so yeah, today we had some pretty interesting stuff happen. Like you were saying uh, just a minute ago, um, we thought we, didn't have, we wouldn't have much to talk about. And, yeah. then, and then the stock market never ceases to amaze. Yeah, yeah, we're going um, to get into a lot of things today. A lot of good stuff happened today, and it's been um, fairly good. My account is up in the green looking good. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the accounts are doing um, and, you know, what's moving out there. <laughs> Palantir was interesting because Palantir's just been hanging out around 25. Like, yeah. It's just chilling at 25. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that continues. But uh, it's been so far a really good June, and hopefully that continues. But um, from my account personally, the long-term account perspective, bro, I've been waiting. I don't even want to say I've been waiting for Drive Shack, but like you texted me this morning and you were like, dude, where are you? Why aren't you <laughs> responding? And uh, Drive Shack went off and I had no idea. Yeah. Um, so that was a pleasant text to get and to find out that, that Drive Shack had went, went off. We'll talk about Drive Shack. We'll talk about um, a lot of stocks that are moving because of Bitcoin. Yep. Um, so, so there was some good news there. All in all, things are looking good, kind of playing out how we talked about. Tech's looking really good. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the uh, I guess quote unquote reopening plays energy's a little bit down today. The Dow in particular is down, uh, and tech is still going up. A lot of it has to do with the what we kind of spoke about last night as far as uh, interest rates and people kind of warming up to the idea that inflation is indeed uh, transitory, that it won't be lasting forever, uh, at least in most cases. And so people are kind of I guess warming up to the fact that the Fed might actually might have actually been right about this all along. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it just goes to what we always speak about diversification, making sure you're balanced. Um, funny, I got a sort of side topic, but I got a text uh, from my downstairs neighbor today. And he said, uh, so he's new into investing and he literally, he, I forget which app he uses, but he uses one kind of like uh, what was it, M3 Finance or M1 Finance? Oh, M1, yeah, yeah. M1 Finance, where you just put a lump sum in and there's like a diversified mix. It's sort of like a mutual fund, but yeah. whatever. So it takes whatever money you put in and it splits it percentage-wise into certain stocks. So he picks the stocks and um, he's just starting out. And classic, hey, why is this up? Why is this down? Why is this moving? And I'm just like... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, you know, (laughs) people just want a black and white answer and the market isn't black and white. But anyways, he texts me and he's like, hey, I probably missed the boat on this one or behind the times on this one. But my free share that they gave me was AMC. Why is it up 300 percent? He just now caught on to that. And I'm just like, (laughs) and he is such a FOMO that like he is. I know what he's thinking is, man, I wish I would have bought some of that. Yeah. You know, and I didn't even say anything. I'm like. It's all hype. It's a reopening play. Yeah. You know, like I didn't even want to get into it. Yeah. But it's having a great day today, though. He's one who got into Penn because of us. Yeah. And of course, is always a comment about Penn. Like, <laughs> always a comment about Penn. Which no, not I going actually anywhere. Added, to, added to today. Yeah. FYI. Yeah, it was a good day to add to Penn for sure. Yeah. All we'll the gaming see. stocks, really. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. But from an account perspective, how's your account doing? Do you make any moves or what? My account's actually down. Um, and primarily because of uh, my leverage in pen, but really a lot of the other stuff's down. Yeah, my account's down five percent today, uh, which isn't doesn't feel great, but it actually is has been benefiting from some of the stuff that I've moved into as far as uh, tech's concerned. Um, my firm's doing wonderful. It bumped up over seventy percent or seventy dollars a share and did pretty good. It's pulling back now though, but um, everything else is doing okay. It's not like I'm really all that red in anything. It's just a red day. Like most of my positions, yeah. I'm still hella green on. It's just one of those days where I I look at it and I'm like, does it make sense to add to anything? 
If not, then I don't. And I've really kind of just been sitting on my hands. The only thing I did end up adding to was Drive Shack on the pullback because I noticed uh, intraday bull flag on Drive Shack as it was consolidating right right after the, the huge move up. So it gave me an opportunity to just average up a little bit because I wanted to have a decent amount of shares. And so I'm pretty happy with the position that I got now. Would you, would you get in, would you add to, or what was I, the price you added? At? I added uh, around 370, somewhere around there, okay. 370, 360. So my average is like 350. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, so let's get right into it, guys. You want to talk about an own the chaos favorite. Drive Shack is an own the chaos favorite. A lot of you guys are wondering what's going on. Like I said, <laughs> You know, we've talked about the fact that this is an extremely volatile stock. And actually, you know what? Let me back this up. Let me back this up. All right. Let's set this up the right way. Okay. Can I, can I just ask you a question? Yeah, ask me a question. Drive Shack went off today. <laughs> yes. Fat Man Zoom. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the stock of the summer? <laughs> that's, an easy, that's an easy answer. And that, my friend, has got to be Drive Shack. We've been on it since last summer, even before last summer. Yep. Um, who knows why, but today was the day that Drive Shack decided to have a nice pop. We woke up, incredible volume on it, was up at one point, what, like 15%? Yep. And we really can't find anything specifically that happened today from a catalyst perspective, but we can talk about why we've been a fan of it. And for me, I've talked about... My, my position ratio should be reflective of my conviction of stocks and drive shack. I've built a full position in my public portfolio. So my public for, portfolio is long-term swing trading. Um, I have a full position size in it and I wanted to get, I wanted to be in it full position size for this move. I had nothing against anybody who wanted to scale in, which you should. And I actually did scale in, but I was pretty quick and intentional about how I did that yeah. just because we've mentioned this thing, any day, we could wake up and it could move. And I, I, I feel like I should have pulled the actual quote that we said, but it literally was the conversation we had where just one of these days, we're going to wake up yep. and it's going to be up 20%. So we're excited about that move. I want to talk about the reasons why we love Drive Shack. I also want to get into where we think Drive Shack's going to go. Um, but for those of you who don't know about Drive Shack, Brad, why don't you tell them what Drive Shack is? Yeah, so Drive Shack is essentially a company that is a direct competitor to Top Golf. Yep. Most of you know what Top Golf is. If you don't, it's essentially a place to go hang out to a driving range, and it's a gamified version of just going to the driving range. Essentially, you can have beers, you can hang out with your buddies, um, mm -hmm. and it's just a great way to have fun playing golf, even if you suck at it. Uh, so... Drive Shack is a direct competitor to the competitor to them, and they really and Top Golf, to be honest, doesn't have that that much competition. This is really kind of like a new trend that Top Golf has been leading. And here comes along Drive Shack, and during the pandemic, they've done a lot of things. They've raised capital. They've been able to uh, consolidate some of the properties they have to be able to put more money into uh, their their business, and they have started to really set themselves apart, especially with the puttery features that they have. So not only do you get to have a driving range experience, but you can also do the putteries, which is another gamified version. So just kind of think about mini golf, but this is legitimate putting. And they also have uh, Rory McIlroy is a part of their, yeah. their crew, so partnered with them. So th there's a lot of good things going on here, and I think that this is the infancy of Drive Shack, and it's really starting to grow more so in the south, and I'm, I can't wait till they start to move their way northbound. Yeah, and if you go back, um, the putteries will, the first one will open in the next 60 days. There'll be two uh, actually in the next 60 days. Yeah. Uh, that is Dallas, that is Charlotte. Then DC will be close behind that. They have plans, I believe, for like eight by the end, by the beginning of 2022. Yep. So those are going to be moving quickly. And and they already started hiring for the Dallas and the Charlotte location. So those are moving along nicely. And I think that's going to be huge for the company. It's nice they have this initial move. I'm wondering if this isn't just the first move of a bigger move. Yes. However, I want to go back to December 14th of 2020. And we had already been on, you know, the Chaos Crew. We had talked about this stock in private live streams. But the first time we actually brought this public to the channel was December 13th, which was Stock Watch Sunday. It was one of our top five stocks. At the time, it was around 240, whatnot. We have been on it in the dollar twenty. We have some people who got in at a dollar twenty, maybe a little bit less, but um, we brought it to the table sub two dollars. But we brought it public on December fourteenth in the watch list 
And this is what I wrote. Featured on Stockwatch Sunday, and for good reason, this morning they just announced to, pre uh, to reopen their Orlando location. So that was, again, this is a reopening place, so that was a benefit. Yep. So we saw Orlando was opening back up, um, which is great news. Top golf competitor has plenty more upside. Uh, just grab some as a starter. We'll look for more opportunities. But we think there's upside to at least $4 a share from here, given their growth plans, which is funny because we kind of looked at that number, and that's pretty much what it hit today. Yeah. Um, since we've actually raised that price target on where we think it can go, but breaking over that $4 or so is going to be an interesting spot for Drive Shack. But when you look at the headwinds, tailwinds, the tailwinds far outweigh any yeah. headwinds they have. I think at this point, they could potentially do an offering if they continue to move towards $5. But even that, I don't know if it necessarily would hurt them. A lot of um, optimism surrounding this stock. I'm glad you brought up the the offering side of it because that is possible. They've already done two yeah. uh, in the last six months. Nothing too crazy. They raised $50 million, I think, in the most recent one. Uh, but And the reason why I'm saying it's not too crazy, especially because they've been doing it the right way. They're not you know, just trouncing uh, their shareholders with shares. Uh, but you look at this, and I, I mentioned this to you just before we went live, um, that Dry Shack moved up... Uh, just with its 11% move. This is like earlier this morning. I have yet to see what the current volume is. I, I should have checked it, but 8.8 .8 million shares was traded that made that 11 plus percent move. And it went up to around 15 to 17% at, at its highs. Yeah. That's 300, that's 300 times more than its normal average daily volume over the last hundred days. Wow. The outstanding shares is 352 million, which is nothing. Yeah. For a stock that's priced yeah. around three, three to four dollars a share, so super small float. They have a lot of growth here, and so all it's going to take is the right crowd. I, that I, that goes to you, redditors, uh, to catch yeah. on to this. Now, it's not attractive as far as short interest is concerned. Two percent wow. of the of the uh, uh, share structure has been shorted, so not a lot of short interest, but. It's a small float. They got a lot of potential here. The growth is going to be awesome. I think this is a really good setup still, even at the price that it's at today. Yeah, it's a fun brand. And they they, they certainly, it wouldn't surprise me if mainstream starts picking this up a little bit. So yeah. I love it, man. And, and I'll, you know, we have those colors back there because of Clover. The reality is Drive Shack's the same color, so we don't even need to change it. I don't know why we didn't wear our Drive Shack hats today. We should, I know. But if they go off tomorrow, we should bring our Drive Shack hats. Hell yeah. Um, but this speaks to the crew. Shout out to everybody in the crew. We had a lot of crew members that have been in this. And the difference between this and Clover, because they were both high conviction stocks for us, the difference I'll say with Drive Shack is it's steadily built up to this point. Yes. And uh, a lot, I see some people in the comments joking, and we've always said, uh, our crew has always said, it, Drive Shack's kind of the gift that gives on giving, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it certainly has been that. And there's no reason to believe there is not a bone in my body, Brad, that feels <laughs> like this is over. This feels like the beginning. Yeah, man. It's like every time we bought the dip, it's paid us back. So... Um it certainly looks great here, and I'm going to continue to add to this on dips as well. But, man, uh, this move over $4 was was huge for the stock. You know, it has historically, when it hits highs like this, does have a pretty healthy pullback. So we'll see what happens after today. But, man, that's the biggest surge that we've seen since their last earnings, which uh, when they talked about how much they were growing and all that good stuff. Yeah. So I think, you know, you look at it at the chart here, it has a, has a an amazing move. And, and before the pandemic started, this was sitting at $5 a share. So I think that we, we've heard from Callaway talk about how they've seen demand for golf like they've never seen before. Unprecedented levels. Yeah. And that's Callaway. He's been around for decades. So I think that this, in my opinion, is just going to continue to grow from here. And even though it's up, I still think that there's plenty of room for this to run. Yeah. And I want to just take this opportunity to let you guys know that we do have the chaos crew for stocks like this, for community, to talk about stocks, to do our due diligence, but also to, to, to be able to identify stocks like, like this and just bring it to the crew. So if you guys are interested in joining the chaos crew for a measly $4.99 a month, <laughs> yeah. go ahead and click that join button. We sent out a watch list, and this one has been on maybe 10 times, if I had to At guess, least, yes. on our watch list, <laughs> where we send out five stocks for technical analysis. You get buy alerts when we're getting into stocks like Drive Shack, like Clover, before everybody else. Yep. We're not always right, right. but we've hit, a, we've hit a lot of home runs. Yeah. And so if you guys want that, make sure you click the join button, get Brad's portfolio um, and all the other fun stuff, not to mention just be a part of the Discord, which I think is the best value for it. Yeah, it's a great community to be a part of. So- 
The next topic that segues nicely into that. One of the stocks actually I bought last week was uh, Square. Yes. And Square had a great day. Um, and it, it's really due to Bitcoin. But positive sentiment around Bitcoin. I think the big news um, in the crypto community today was Bitcoin popped back over 40K. Uh, subsequently, all the other Bitcoin related stocks seem to do well today. Square was one of them. I thought Square was at ridiculously low levels. So I had started building a position. So it's done really well for me. Yeah. Um, Elon made tweets Sunday, yesterday, basically saying, here's the roadmap for getting back to um, allowing allowing customers to buy Tesla's using Tesla using Bitcoin. And that's essentially 50% clean energy for Bitcoin mining and future increased growth of that number. And so Bitcoin pops up, all the other crypto Bitcoin related stocks that are associated with Bitcoin ended up doing really well. Yeah. I mean, and, and obviously Square is responding to the, responding to that very nicely. I mean, it's up 5%. I would, I just want to say, and we've been talking about this too, that we think that Square is much more than Bitcoin, even though it gets yeah. heavily influenced by that. Um, but there's just so much more going for this the stock than, than just a cryptocurrency. And I mean, we've talked about how this is a tech stock along with a reopening play. And, uh, you know, it's just good to finally see this start to move back up. If you look at it on the daily chart, it looks really good. This has mimicked a lot of the other tech stocks that we've seen. I mean, I could pick up a dozen tech stocks that have the same pattern, the same cup and handle pattern on a daily chart. And this is breaking out nicely, squares up over the 50 day moving average. If it continues to do the, to sustain up above, above that 50 day MA, I think the momentum's still gonna be uh, rocking for this one, Fat Man Zoom. Here's the thing about your comment with Square, as far as it's such, so much more than crypto, I certainly agree. The thing though, that, that I wanna amend to what we said we just add to the conversation. If you're, if you are bullish on crypto, bullish on Bitcoin, maybe interested in having exposure, but not necessarily wanting to buy it. Um, Square is a great option, and and I don't think there is any company publicly traded that is more invested in Bitcoin, and not money wise, but just like looking towards that company to grow now. Maybe you could argue maybe Coinbase or something like that, but yeah. that's crypto as a whole. Jack Dorsey, uh, let me, and I'll say this. There's no other CEO like that is more hella bullish on it. Jack Dor Dorsey is essentially making it his life mission yes. to do whatever he can to invest and leverage Bitcoin. They're talking about- um, And that's to quote him himself. Incorporating the Square wallet. Yeah, uh, are coordinating digital wallets for crypto, which is a smart move. But we're going to see so much more of Square investing in Bitcoin in the future, and not just buying Bitcoin, but leveraging Bitcoin as a resource on their platform. And so if you're bullish on crypto, if you're bullish on um, tech in general, and if you're bullish on fintech, this guy's got it all. Square's got it all. So it's really a great one to scoop up for the long term if you're bullish on, on the, all those things. Yeah. Jack Dorsey basically wants to make Square, or just his life mission, like you had said, the the infrastructure that surrounds Bitcoin, essentially. Yeah. Uh, not that it needs any kind of help in that way, but just to kind of bring, bring about awareness, make things easier for people who are looking to hold on to Bitcoin and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, obviously that side of it's going to be huge, but we've talked about like how it impacts small business and how it's going to, you know, do really well on a continued reopening. Hospitality has been just on fire and, that's where Square really comes in uh, to to help them out, and that's where they they benefit a lot yeah. from. I mean, that's our primary revenue driver, a small business. So yeah. uh, you have that on top of the Bitcoin side of things, and it is just an absolutely amazing play. I, you, this can't be understated. I don't well, think. I mean, imagine this: you got POS systems. You talk about the small business infrastructure. That's a natural connection. If Square wanted to allow their merchants to accept crypto. Yeah. Well, let's just say Bitcoin to accept right. Bitcoin. Yeah. And so that's where there's a lot of opportunity being a fintech. Does Tesla make so much sense? Would I be hella bullish on, you know, Tesla for Bitcoin reasons? Nah, not really. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice to have. It's like icing on the cake, but I'm not buying Tesla because of Bitcoin exposure. That's just, this is nice. It's yeah. extra. Square, on the other hand, 
there's a lot of synergies, potential synergies in the future that they could leverage, and they're going to continue to clearly leverage. And so I love it. Not to mention Twitter, if if Jack Dorsey ever decides to look look at those angles as well as the CEO of Twitter as yeah. well. So we'll see. I have to believe that there's there's a synergy in between those two at some point. At yeah. some point they're going to work together and uh, that should be interesting to see when all that takes place and how it takes place. Um, Daniel Camarena, what's up, man? From what's the FedEx on, Warehouse. He's got two call options on Dry Shack. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know price targets for, for Drive Shack. I know Rudy Brown's should still be in Drive Shack. Oh, yeah. What do you guys got? Himself some Drive Shack. Crew, what you got to target at? Or sorry, what do you got your uh, price, your dollar cost average at on that? I do also have it in my personal like retirement account i have drive check which i've had in longer um i think it's in low twos maybe yeah um so i've been on that for a while and i'm not selling that anytime soon i'm rolling with that speaking of not selling any anything anytime soon and we were just talking about crypto um you're you're a pretty big proponent and supporter of ethereum yeah and uh you know crypto in general has been really making a comeback. I mean, Bitcoin went up over 40,000. Uh, and so it's really starting to, to come about, you know, it's obviously been influenced by, uh, by Elon and some of the tweets that he's made about how, you know, Tesla is going to go back to accepting payment for, uh, yeah. their, their vehicles. And, uh, that's kind of really what sparked the movement on Bitcoin today. And, and really over the weekend, uh, right now it actually fell back below 40,000 sitting at, uh, 37 or I'm sorry, 39, seven. Um, and so, and it's, it's interesting because as decentralized as people like to claim it to be, uh, it certainly has centralized like movements. So, I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are on Ethereum. I know that you are really heavy on this, um, but wanted to kind of get your thoughts on today's movement and, and the movement over the weekend. Yeah, I have just minuscule exposure to Bitcoin, but yeah, Ethereum. I'm I'm putting sort of my crypto eggs in the Ethereum basket. So any any money I have towards that, which is a hedge for me, I've spoken about that. Ten uh, percent. My my goal was. Maybe move it up to fifteen percent eventually. Dollar cost averaging in on dips here and there. Yeah, but um, you know, with Ethereum and Bitcoin being the two top dogs, uh, you can really—I don't want to say you can expect, but I've come to realize that they tend to move in tandem. There's space for them both, and there's reasons to like them both for different re- for different sort of reasons. Yeah, and they're both compelling. Um, but with that being said. They both kind of had these critical marks where like, you know, trying to get back over 40K was for Bitcoin. That was the number. Getting back over 3K and moving towards 4K was it for Ethereum. And what I wondered this morning was like, Ethereum's lagging in the short, just really like short term, meaning like to the, the last 24 hours. Yeah. I expect it to make a move similar. It may take a second, but when it does... I expect it to move above 3K on its way to 4K, especially if Bitcoin keeps moving just as a sympathy play. And this may be a good opportunity for me to add. I looked at it today. I did not pull the trigger, but I am looking to add around this level. Only, And the only reason I didn't is because I added it at 2,600. Yeah. Um, but it, it might happen this week. We'll see how, how things go. If Bitcoin like goes to 50 or let's just say 45 and then... Uh, Ethereum still lagging, that would compel me a little bit more to get through. There's still a lot of cases that uh, analysts are making about, uh, you know, Bitcoin going to 100K by the end of the year. So this is still very much on the table. And if that happens, I mean, if, who's to say that Ethereum can't go to 10? And uh, I, I think, think that's a much, that's a 2, 2x the growth of, of Bitcoin if yeah. it does that. So, I mean, I think, well, and we've seen this from Ethereum before that it has, it's been outperforming or has much stronger moves both ways. Mind you, both ways it has much stronger moves uh, than Bitcoin does. So you can make the argument that it's more volatile. So if Bitcoin doubles, I mean, who knows? We could see uh, Ethereum even triple from here. So, Well, and the big thing, and I wish I would have led the intro to this segment, but the big thing is, let's point out, we talked about last week, literally, we talked about where does the attention lie? And two separate live streams, Brad, I mentioned Nobody's talking about Bitcoin. Yep. And and you have to ask yourself, do you think 
it's over and nobody's interested anymore or are they just distracted for the moment at the squirrel you know like sort of like squirrel yeah yeah at the squirrel and then they're going to come back to it and my thought was they were coming back to it and that has kind of worked out for us is while people are running chasing squirrels here and there we're just looking for where the attention is and we're moving on to the next thing so yep. while everybody's on meme all right let's start building position in in things that we believe in that we've been on knowing that excitement will get back in so this to me is like all right let's move back into let's get the attention back to bitcoin let's get the attention back to crypto and it's just ironic we literally just had this conversation about how nobody was talking about crypto and it's like what like yeah what are you talking about yeah it was like all of a sudden once dogecoin fell off uh everybody just didn't want anything to do with bitcoin or or, or a lot of the cryptos and so um this looks like it could be the next move up. I'm not saying that it is going to be, but there's defi it's definitely been promising over the last uh, 72 hours. And, uh, you know, I will say that Ethereum is well above its 200-day moving average and maintaining above that. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is still struggling to get back up over it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's got to get to 43 uh, for it to get up over its 200-day moving average as of today. So we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, man, I mean, we've talked about this, this cloud of money that goes from one area to the next. And everybody, it seemed as if this cloud of money was leaving crypto to go buy up AMC. Yeah. And I'd be curious to see how, you know, some of the, uh, I guess, Reddit stocks, if they start losing interest, how much of it kind of filters its way back into uh, cryptocurrencies because to me it seems as if the majority of the folks that are trading the mcs the game stops the clovers uh are our age or younger and so they go with what they know so most of them have been in crypto they went and bought some of the meme stocks the wall street yeah. bet stocks and now i would imagine that we could see a, a nice uh, rotation back into some of the cryptos as well i also want to bring up one other thing and i want to bring up where i'm focusing my attention next um so you and i i think are in similar situations you have your short-term swing trading i have a long-term swing trading for the public portfolios and we both feel confident and feel like we're in a good position with our spec positions yep. specifically tech spec positions and we've been working towards building our tech and we believe that this is the beginning of a run for tech is that fair to say yes uh growth tech and so We've been, we've been working that for months now. So we're going to let that simmer. We're not, I'm, we're not getting rid of it, but I'm, I think I know where I'm moving on to the next thing. And it's kind of tech, but it's not speculative. Yeah. I got to move into the big dogs, man. I got to move into to Apple, Fang. Like, I'm going to be, begin building a, a fairly sizable position and it starts with apple amazon is potentially on the plate and even facebook that's ear, near 52 week highs isn't out of consideration but i think it's time to bring apple into the portfolio which isn't sexy which isn't new which isn't like a big mover it's had a good day but there's a lot of upside to this and i won't i'll get into reasons like a different episode but i just wanted to give you a heads up because you don't even know that yeah um I so the fat man zoom stocks essentially is what you're talking about uh, aside yeah, from yeah. aside from you know a, a, two of them right MGM, MGM zoom yeah so I mean those I think are going to be really good you look at something like a Facebook and it's been the probably the strongest of the fang stocks uh, if you want to talk talk about just fang specifically um, but you look at Apple bro and I mean Apple just continues to deliver quarter after quarter, yeah. and it just has gotten no love. Over the last six months, actually, we're working on eight months now. Since September, it's really just moved sideways. I would say since the split, it's hardly gone anywhere. And I, you look at um, how this is continuing to move, it just popped back up over the 50-day moving average. So this could be the spark that it needed. We've talked about how interest rates were coming down. They're now down below 1.5%. It could come down as low as a one and a quarter, and that is a really good recipe for uh, the tech stocks in general. And most of it starts with Fang, and Fang could be leading the charge to the S and P, getting to about forty five hundred, maybe by the end of the month. Yeah, and that's I think that's the point is it's time to to begin building up in Fang again. Yeah, and they're they're going to prove why they're still the top dog. And the thing with Fang is you're not going to see a drive shack move. No, but 
you're going to see incremental growth and you're just going to turn around and these two and a half percent days are going to start stacking up and you're going to look and you're going to be like, wait, we were up 20% in the month. Yeah. Right. Like it's how this happened. And the great thing about it, like to me, when, you know, when friends ask me about stocks, I kind of think about their risk, risk tolerance, what I know about them, what about their personality and I'll address it accordingly. So my friends are a little bit more conservative uh, don't have a high risk tolerance. I'll give them the Costco's. I'll give them the Fangs, whatever. But Apple is the number one in that. Yeah. Where it's like there's not a lot of risk to it, and I could average down all day on Apple, and I'm not going to worry about it because when I retire, that shit's still going to be in my portfolio. Yeah. It ain't going anywhere. The average rate of return for Apple for the last twenty uh, is it twenty years? I don't want to sc- screw this up, but it's definitely been been at least twenty years. The average rate of return is 40 percent that's crazy year over year that's crazy average now that doesn't mean that this year is going to be a 40 percent year but you know last year was 80 percent year so i mean yeah. there's going to be those ups and downs good years and bad years but on average 40 percent returns and these and amazon's just as sideways even has been longer i think like nine months we said yeah and so the great thing about that is Amazon, I think, is going to be the one that really makes the, a huge move, too. If you have patience and discipline, which we talk about all the time, patience and dif- discipline. If you're just patient, who cares if it's in your long-term portfolio? Who cares when it goes off? Yes. And that's where I don't understand why people are getting like getting so worked up about it. You should just be excited it stayed in this channel because it's going to break out. And my bet is it breaks out to the upside yeah. unless there's some overall market issue. But... All things equal, I think it's going to have a great move. And we've talked about 4,000 easy, and that's going to come. So who, like, the, the, the bullish cases on Amazon are ridiculous as well. So yeah. I'm excited, and I think after next quarter, we see when we get the earnings for next quarter for Amazon, it's going to be nuts. Can you imagine, like, uh, being, man Zoom being a hedge fund manager and just looking at Apple and being like, you know what? I could have just held Apple my entire career. Yeah. And I would have been... Yeah. A freaking rock star. (laughs) Yeah, most of them, I mean, and most hedge funds, I think it's 60% plus, don't beat the market. And all they had to do was just hold Apple and they would have crushed it. (laughs) Yeah, and and, that's what blows my mind. And it's the same thing with people who we speak with on the channel, like they always want the next big thing. They want the next AMC, GME. The problem is, if you guys ever ever gambled, this will make sense to you. For you, you out there that gamble, went to casino, and I don't know how much you gamble, but like, not much. When, when you, the reason why I don't gamble a lot is because when I would go to the casinos and I love craps, I love blackjack, and I really love poker. If you look at like the true gamble, um, like I'll take poker out of the mix, and we'll just talk about the ones that just are odds based. So yeah. roulette, uh, craps, and blackjack; those are probably popular ones. They're all about odds. Yeah. If you look at those, like. The, a couple things you hear that correlate with the stock market. People always talk about how much they were up at a given time, yeah. but they never sold. So that you you weren't up. You didn't make money. Like, yeah. And so they get hooked on chasing that number, which happens a lot. But the other thing is what you'll know, what you'll realize if you've ever done it is, and I'm guilty of this, I'll make a run, I'll make a bunch of money, and I'll be disciplined and I'll have a strategy. It'll work out. And once I make a bunch of money, I'll get greedy. I'll yeah. get looser on my disciplines, looser on my strategy. And I'll start feeling myself and get a little bit of false confidence. Yeah. The same thing happens with the stock market. I mean, if I pick a stock and I hit a boom, it's very easy for me to be like, oh, got it. Let's get the next 500% runner yeah. and you get loose and you lose discipline and you don't scale in. Like that's the problem where people don't understand the risk. I, I think they don't understand the risk and stuff like the hype stocks. It's like, so what you hit? Yeah. That's one. That's one you hit. You hit one home run. Show me you doing it consistently over time because the majority of people, they're like lottery winners. Lottery winners always end up broke. Yep. And that's because they didn't know what they were going to do when they got the money. And so they get this false confidence and they start buying other shit thinking that they could replicate it and they chase when all you should have done from the get-go is bought Apple. That's it. And this it, isn't financial advice. <laughs> 40% compounded over 20 years. What does that look like? But they don't want that. Yeah. They want to be the guy at the party right. that's like, yo, 
you should buy this. Like, this is the stock that I made. Like, I made money off of GME. I'm not going to any party saying I made a bunch of money on GME <laughs> unless I was in it before everybody else. Yeah. Like, Drive Shack, I was in it before anybody talked about it. Clover, I was in it before anybody. Unless that, why am I like puffing my chest about jumping on stuff that a bunch that a bunch of like redditors got on being a sheep yeah you're gonna brag about being a puffy white sheep make some funny noises that people count at night and so <laughs> there's guys i can't i can't not continue to impress this upon you i'm not saying there's anything wrong with yolo no plays. absolutely not i'm not saying anything wrong 100%. with spec yeah but if your entire portfolio consists of hitting that next big home run good luck i ain't with you on that and i had i gotta bring this up because i talked to you a few weeks ago about my buddy who was like like we were at the bar and he was kind of poo-pooing whatever yeah. clover or whatever and He's like, tell me the stuff he's getting in, and it's all spec. He's like, you should look at this and this. And I go, bro, my strategy isn't that. I got no issues with what you do, but like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. 25% Mac, max is in spec. And to me, spec ain't AMC. That's right. a YOLO. And so he, he then follows up with his text, and I just wanted to pull it up. Uh, good stocks to look at, like telling me to look at for the channel. DNMR, CMPS, Skills, SKLZ, and UPST. I'm not saying I, I got an issue with it at all, but, like, you didn't list one, like, number one, you don't know my strategy because I'm looking for great value. I'm looking for stocks on discount yeah. that are reliable and that have a proven track record. So you don't even know me and my strategy. And number two, you didn't, like, mix that up. Like, you are all, like, high-spec YOLO. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Remind me, guys, check in on him a year from now, see where we're at, because I want to know where he is, is a year from now. We'll call him the machine gunner. Yeah. Be like, yo, where's the machine gunner? <laughs> yep. Yep, 100%. So uh, Sean says 10000 with 40% compounded for 20 years would give you $8 million. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. And you actually had a buddy who bought a house by investing in, in Apple for what? A much smaller amount of time than that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was like 10 years that he ended up buying that. Oh, it, no, it was maybe seven. So whenever they did, man, when did they do the seven to one split? Do you remember what year that was? Was that 2012? Uh, somewhere around there, I think, yeah. Yeah, so like six years. So it was probably 2018 he bought yeah. his house. He still has it. It's funny, I actually talked to him today. I rarely talk to him, but we talked a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so he... Got his first job and he dropped 10K in Apple. That was the only stock he bought. He ended up buying a lump sum of Facebook later and that was like a off IPO. Yeah. <laughs> like and, and then the IPO tanked. I mean, that was yeah terrible. Yeah. And and For obviously Facebook. now, I mean, that was at he must have got it at like twenty or whatever it was at, eighteen dollars. Yeah. Now it's three hundred and thirty dollars. Right. But no, Apple was his big investment and he used his earnings off Apple to put the down payment on his house. So it was 10K and then he put a couple lumps after that. And he lives in DC. Like yeah. it was a half a million dollar house. Yeah, right. And he that still was, has- some, That was 1,200 square feet. He still has <laughs> shares. He still has shares, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's a testament to it. And yeah. we, him and I just talked about it. He's like, still, add, still, you know, still hanging on to my Apple. Still adding to Apple. And that's the reality of it all, you know? That's just, the, that's the craziest part that people, but it takes time. Like, it's not some overnight thing. And the majority of people want some want to have that house-like money, yeah. uh, you know, in a couple of weeks' time. And you just, would never convince him to buy an AMC, a GME. Yeah. You, you could even, Not after what Apple's done for him. Yeah, exactly. And so, but he also has a very low risk tolerance, but... It's the long game, man. It's the long game. That's the key, I think. I mean, I'm still young, but, like, that's the key is the long yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, and to to our credit, we have long-term investments, but yeah. we also still have fun in the, in the stock market every single day. So, like, we have the money that we can play around with and have a little fun with. Scratch that itch. Yeah, and then, you know, anytime we have a huge win, we put that money right back into some of our long-term investments and then live to fight another day and keep and repeat the process over again and still have a blast doing it. That's what makes it fun. You can still play with the fun stuff, but when we see stuff, people like whole accounting AMC or taking out all of their margin on GameStop and that, or whatever, like that's the stuff that gets scary as shit. And that we, we just try to help people with that. But, and just, it's just from personal experience. If you think we're up here talking about shit like this, because we haven't been through it, 
uh, you got another thing coming because I've blown up accounts uh, multiple times before I finally figured it out. Yeah. and was able to do this for a living. So, um, you know, and I think it, it's also like for me, it's quality of life. Yeah. Like I don't want to stress out every day. Like I don't want right. to yeah. have a heart attack every day. Yeah. And so if I'm doing a YOLO or a spec, it's something that I can stand to lose and I'm okay with it and I'm not worried about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people have a much higher risk tolerance than me and that's cool. Like go for it. You can see, um, you'll probably see more gains. Yeah. Um, maybe longer term, you'll see more gains. I don't know. Jeff Panika said Amazon better long term gains than Apple potentially. And that wouldn't surprise me. And I no. think Amazon 10 years from now could potentially be that one where it's like, Hey, you know, this is the 40%, but the reality is they're probably both going to crush it. And whichever one you go to is yeah. going to be, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. I mean, you got to think Apple's been traded since the eighties. Yeah. So it's been public since the early eighties. Maybe it was even seventies. I, 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 I felt like it was the seventies, but yeah. yeah, I mean, either way, a long ass time. time. <laughs> yeah. um, but I will say like, there's arguments for both. And that maybe that's a debate we have, like which one does better in the next 10 years. Yeah. Um, the thing about Apple, though, is, man, they are pivoting perfectly and they are, you know, the fact that they're still having 30, 40, 50 percent year over year growth, quarter over quarter growth or whatever. Like, yeah. that's insane for this company. And they're pivoting ridiculously to their service model. And that's what's going to bring them into the next decade is those serv the service revenue. Yep. High margins. Yeah, absolutely. There's just so much going on that's good for the, for both companies you just can't go wrong with owning either one of them uh i had a couple of people uh, you know a little bit nervous i saw rudy brown asking about oil because of the fed meeting that's coming up cleveland close had a tough day today too so guys i just want you to kind of step back and look at some of the uh, just to switch gears here a little bit look at some of the um, materials and industrial and oil plays they all pull back, but this isn't a surprise. Look at Cleveland Cliffs after a huge run-up. So this is going to be, no, this should come as no surprise to see a little bit of a pullback. To me, as long as it's driving, it's still on this trend, which it very much still is. And I mentioned this last week about the chart getting a little bit ruined because it got a bit of ahead of itself. But it's still on track to do really well. It's still following the trend. So as long as it continues to do that, I'm good. And I told you guys on Thursday that I trimmed out of this. It started to take up too much of my portfolio as it started to shoot up. So I'd sold a third of this position. Still in, though. And if this comes down to 20 and retests it, then I may still I may add back to it. Uh, but that's just fine. As far as oil is concerned, that shit is not going anywhere. Marathon Oil had a pullback today. Um, and that's just it. It's a pullback. It, and it barely pulled back. Look at this daily chart. It's downtrended over the last, I would say, seven to nine days of trading, but not really anything crazy. I mean, it has yet to have broke below its 1330 uh, support just briefly spiked over that about for, for about five minutes last week. And that was it. So oil is not going anywhere. It's just, we're in a, in a moment, so to speak, where we're just kind of like hitting the pause button on some of this stuff as people start to kind of rotate a little bit back to tech, but the reopening, the oil plays, I still think oil sees 80, 80 bucks at least uh, before the year's out. So I haven't really uh, moved a ton out of these stocks. I'm just going to kind of continue to wait and watch those. So I saw a lot of people asking about those, uh, and I think it's definitely worth just kind of watching and observing to make sure that they hold supports. And if they do, it's a great ad opportunity, in my opinion. I wanted to bring one more thing to the to today's stream. I don't know if you heard about it, but I want your feedback on it. So um, NVIDIA. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA had a really good day. Again. It's had a great run. It's <laughs> leading into its stock split, but it had some interesting news that I don't know if you caught. Um, so last year, NVIDIA announced the ARM acquisition, which was a microchip company based out of Britain, which was great news. And we kept saying, deal hasn't gone through, the deal hasn't gone through. Yeah. Um, now the concern is that the British government may block this deal from going through. We heard about that recently. Yep. Well, just yesterday, I believe it was, the CEO of Qualcomm said that if the deal is blocked for NVIDIA to purchase ARM, that they would be willing to go in with a group of um, other businesses, so they said a consor consortium of investors, if they kept ARM independent and basically brought it to the publicly traded markets. So that means that it looks more likely that the ARM deal might, might not go through for NVIDIA and 
gave me a little bit of pause and a little bit of concern. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. And so what are your thoughts on that? Because clearly the market didn't react on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the market kind of overlooked it because of the split. But what happens after the split? And then they, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, the reason that this is continuing to go up is because people are excited about the split. And it was just like, oh, by the way, this might not go through. If I, <laughs> they're just it, whispering about it. So that's very interesting. Yeah. What, I mean, what was the purpose? Because they're afraid it's going to become a monopoly like yeah, some of the other big tech I stocks, think that I guess. Was a concern. Yeah. So, I mean, that should be interesting to see what happens after the split when people finally realize, hey, this is going to be a, a thing, how yeah. the stock reacts. And, and that's preventing me from getting it in. I was looking for an opportunity to get into the publicly traded portfolio. I have it in my long-term investing. It's a Fat Man Zoom special. Yeah. But it even makes me think about trimming in there as well, which I never do. I probably won't just because I'll ride it out and have good gains on it. But if I was in it in the publicly traded account, I would for sure be out be out yeah. right before the split. Because the split happens. I Well, let me put it this way. I was looking to get into it after the split because I believe post-split there's going to be a sell-off. There's going to be yes, profit taking. Too. And so I was going to look for an opportunity because I love this company. This makes me hesitate, and I probably won't get it until... I get confirmation that this will go through. And if I miss a run, I miss a run. Yeah. But if it splits and sells off, and then by some chance that news happens that it's not going through around the same time, it could just be a massive plunge for this stock. Now, there will be an opportunity to get back in, but there's a lot of concerns and a lot of headwinds building up for NVIDIA. I hate to say it. I love the company. Yeah. But they're competing with the tailwinds that I was so excited about and which would made it such so much of a favorite the last couple months. Yeah, I mean, this was a perfect bull flag pattern on the charts and it broke right up out of it. So it wasn't surprised to see this surprising to see this move to 720, but man, if that really does uh create issues for them, especially after the split because we were already anticipating a buy the rumor sell a news type of situation and then you add that on top of it, it could I'm not we're not saying Nvidia could crash or anything yeah, like that, yeah. but a sharp correction could definitely be in store for it. Uh, with some pretty sideways movement. I would imagine, it wouldn't surprise me, I should say, uh, that we see a move kind of like what we saw with Tesla and Apple where it was yeah. just, it kind of fizzles out as sideways. And um, I think you're going to have plenty of time to get into NVIDIA if that happens. I see, saw somebody was asking um, about NVIDIA, uh, about how, you know, it would be good for them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wouldn't D-Ray, wouldn't yeah. that be good for NVIDIA? They won't have to pay for ARM. Yes, no. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, if you're if you're acquiring a company, it essentially adds value to you as long as the you know the company well, that you're acquiring is is a good one, which Arm is. It is a great company, and it addressed a huge pain point, which was the global chip shortage. Yes. So they made a move, which was so exciting at the time because there was this chip shortage that was impending, and they did it right at the time that it just became this huge storyline. Right, right before, really, and so. That's why it's great for them. Now, if they had overpaid for it, whatever, you could make that argument. But the reality is, is it, it shows they're addressing that. Um, and so, no, I don't think it's good for them for it to not go through. David Chalk said some of the best trades made are the ones never made. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Um, it just gives me pause. I'm, I'm backing off thinking about getting into it in the public portfolio just to see how this reacts. Yeah. But to be clear, I still love this company. Um, but certainly a storyline to keep an eye on, folks, if you haven't heard about it. Yeah, man. Uh, that's uh, that's interesting. I appreciate you bringing that to the to the stream. There's 200 of you guys hanging in here and 36 likes. I don't know what the hell's up with that, but you all know better. If you can hit that thumbs up, we certainly would appreciate it. <laughs> uh, man, this is a great show. I wasn't expecting much of anything just because of how the market's been. Yeah. But, man, I have had a blast this, this hour. Yeah, guys, we go live Monday through Thursday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll be back here same time tomorrow. We'll see what's going on with Drive Shack, give you any updates. We'll talk about the overall market, any storylines. Hopefully we'll see Ethereum above 3K. And those Bitcoin ballers keep moving. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified when we go live. Other than that, I'm good, bro. That's going to do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll be back at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And that is it for Fat Man Zoom and I. Bye. See ya. I quit this bitch. I hope so, David. <laughs>